While the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission obtained a court order freezing the assets of a Texas-based initial coin offering that claimed to have raised more than $600 million. This, this story comes to us from Bloomberg. The order was filed in federal court in Dallas and halts a rise bank from raising any additional cash from investors. So this is, this is a, a first of its kind where the SEC has stepped in during an ICO, like they were, they were, they were continuing to run this ICO, mm-hmm. and so, so quote, this is the first time in the commission has the commission has sought the appointment of a receiver in connection with ICO fraud. The uh, the head of STC enforcement said in a statement, quote, we will use all of our tools and remedies to protect investors from those who engage in fraud, fraudulent conduct in the emerging digital securities marketplace. So the asset freeze is the biggest action yet for the agency trying to police. The market of of billions of dollars raised through ICOs this year uh, in 2017. Yeah, it and definitely so, looks like the SEC is stepping up uh, its game uh, game with you know warning about fraudulent ICOs. You know they started you know making comments late last year. Now they're getting you know actively involved. Yes. Yeah, I haven't had time to to vet this particular one. It's, I haven't had time to vet many of them, but uh, just the name, Arise Bank. That, that name alone kind of suggests they don't understand what the point of all this crypto stuff is. The reason we don't want to use all this crypto stuff is so that we don't have to use a bank. Right. So yeah. so uh, the name of it right there, and, and I remember uh, the Bitcoin Savings and Trust that was a long time ago with Pirate at 40, uh, basically it was a Ponzi scheme. Um, yeah, they, they call it savings and trust. That's like a bank. Just, it's, yeah. like, it's like, no, the whole point is you don't need to use a bank. So anything saying it's a bank in the crypto space, be very wary, period. Yes. And, and, and even if they are completely legit and they do everything they're supposed to say they're, they say they're going to do, they still call themselves a bank. And the government has a lot of rules about what it considers a bank to be. So at least in the U.S. So, so even if they do everything like moral and give the money back they're supposed to give and, and take the money and, and use it for what they say they're going to use it for, even if they do it all, you know, moral, they, if they still call themselves a bank, the government could say, hey, uh, we don't want you doing that. So using bank in your name automatically gets you additional scrutiny. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I established an LLC and I said I was going to give a classes and it said, oh, you're going to be a school. You're going to have to do extra paperwork. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to be a school. I'm not going to offer degrees and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and uh, so, so I could, I had to be careful, not even say classes. I mean, so, so you might say tutorials or you might say something like that. I mean, this is all just, if you want to learn math stuff and, and, uh, you know, it's nothing, you know, nothing scammy or, or weird about it. just if you want to learn math, you can take a class. But uh, you have to be careful the language you use when you're interacting with uh, governments. You're right, Darren, I, and especially when you're interacting with governments. I mean, they have their own special language. We refer to it as legalese. But you, you, you have translators out there and they're called lawyers. Yeah. I mean, literally, they're, they use a special language. It's like a coding language even. And it codes laws and... And there's a whole industry of, of, of people called attorneys to try to interpret that and, and ensure that you're following it. Yeah. If somebody's starting a company calling it a bank in the crypto space, there's two things. They don't understand the whole point of crypto, and either they've done a lot of paperwork or they are setting themselves up for getting char- charged with, basically charged in a, in like in a court sense. Of, of not doing all the paperwork they need to do. So Well, and, and that's an interesting thing to bring up. Yes, today's episode highlighted a lot of activity by the government, to, to the SEC, or the, yes, the SEC, and then the, uh, the commission, uh, the CTFC, that, uh, you know, they're, they're doing stuff now. They're actually going out and they're pursuing some of these, these fraudulent actors and these bad actors. And, you know, now, now is even more... Uh, of a critical time for these startups and these new projects to really think about what language they're using, what they're actually offering, what utility that token or that service is actually going to have. Yeah. And start really, you know, thinking about the the challenges that are going to come from the government. And and the way it's set up too, like the DAO, the DAO, the SEC already came out with a report and said that clearly was a security from the Security and Exchange Commission's perspective. But um, but the 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 ruling or the paper that came out was it did not seem to suggest that a utility token 
like a token you have that that allows you to use a platform or something like that. It didn't suggest a utility token was a security. Now that doesn't mean that tomorrow they won't l release a port that that says a utility token is a security. I'm just saying that the SEC is trying to distinguish. You know, here's the properties of a security, and for example, the DAO fit those properties. So, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I, I I think the market is saturated in in all these tokens and all that. So, if you want to launch a token, I would encourage you not to. But <laughs> uh, if you do, uh, yeah, definitely uh, think about how the government's going to interpret what you're doing and all that. And and it would be good if you really ensure that you know there's no other project just like yours out there, right? Because uh, I think there's a lot of overlap in projects and mm -hmm. a lot of times they think, well, I'll, I'll think of a clever name for the token and, you know, really buzz it up and, and see if I can do better than somebody that's, that's already started that similar project six months ago.